Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day that you're listening to this, I hope it's good. I hope it's been good. I hope it's been peaceful and I hope it's brought good things to you because you deserve that. Now, before we get started, let's get focused and centered. We're going to take a deep breath and as we breathe, we're going to breathe in peace and breathe out stress. Breathe in joy and breathe out pain. Breathe in God's love and breathe out the cares of this world. Ready? On three. One, two, three. One more time. Now pause. Do you smell that? There's a newness in the air. It's fall, it's harvest season, and this is the time to reap what has been sown. This is for the person who has been striving a long time, the one who's been sowing and working for a long time. This may have seemed like the longest season of your life, and so many things have happened that you just feel like you're caught in a whirlwind, one that never ends. You've experienced hurt, heartache, and some things that you never thought or imagined would ever come to be. And you have cried, boy, have you cried. Not just that, but you also feel like you're on the cusp of something new. It's not loud, but it's subtle. You know things are changing and it's kind of scary. You're in a weird place right now where you can feel the old things falling off of you. As you've been pushing through and persevering, the old things are being ripped away from you and you know it. You can feel it and it may be strange to you. It's foreign, but it's also good. And get this, God isn't surprised. He isn't flummoxed or confused because he's been there all the time. Remember, he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's been there at the beginning and the end. He knows where you're going, and I think you do too. Psalm 126 and 5 says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. You're not just reaping for what you've sown into other people, places, or things. You are reaping what you've sown into you. All of the work that you've been doing within you to heal and become whole is paying off. You allowed yourself to be planted, cultivated, pruned, and watered or rained on, and you've endured the growing pains of breaking out of that old shell, that old environment, that old mindset, that old way of thinking, those old habits that held you down. Now you are reaping the new you. Genesis 8 and 22 says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. God has promised that there will always be seed time and harvest. If you plant it, something must come forth. If you've labored for it, something must be born. Just like in Isaiah 66 and 9, where God poses the question, Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? Shall I who cause delivery shut up the womb? Another version says, In the same way, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born. New and unfamiliar things can be frightening or nerve-wracking, but allow yourself to be at peace with the changes because it's coming, whether you want it to or not. The full chapter of Psalm 126 says this, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Now here's what I see when I read that. 
when God brings you out of your captivity, when he brings you out of that shell from that seed that you once were, he will restore your dreams. Your mouth will be filled with laughter and your tongue with singing. That means he's going to bring joy back to your life because he will do great things for you. He will make you glad. And after all of that time that you have spent weeping and crying, he's going to cause you to reap in joy. You're going to reap what you've sown and you're going to reap your happiness, your joy, and your dreams will come true. And when that time comes, you won't be able to do anything but rejoice. And I'm here to tell you that it's okay to embrace your new season, to embrace this new way. You deserve it. You worked hard for it. This last hard season of your life was not in vain. Pretty soon, God is going to make good on all of his promises to you. And I want to leave you with this last thought. Think about this. The way that you reap your harvest in this season will set you up for your next harvest. Reaping it right with the right attitude and the right heart will dictate the condition of your next harvest. Reaping requires care and how you steward and care for what you reap in this season is going to show God that you are able to handle even bigger harvests and seasons and years to come. So of course, before we go, let's go to God in prayer. God, our God, our everlasting Father, the God of all creation, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of seed time and harvest, the master of winter, spring, summer, and fall. God, we thank you for your everlasting love, your grace and your mercy, and for being the God that you are, a God full of love and kindness, a God full of grace, and a God who provides peace. Father, I pray for every person that's listening to this podcast today, that you would touch their lives. Lord, I pray that if there's any apprehension, any fear, anything that would keep them from moving forward into this next season that they've already worked so hard for, I pray, Lord, that you would give them the strength and the wisdom to keep going forward, to realize that there is nothing in the past. There is nothing behind them that will benefit them. Father, I ask you that you would grant them peace, joy, understanding, that you would give them a clear mind and a clear heart, and that this new season be blessed and full of joy for everything that they have dealt with and experienced. We know that you are the Lord of the harvest. And God, we thank you even for the hard times, even for those growing pains, even for the pain of being planted and the pain and discomfort of losing what once was our old selves, our old identities, our old comforts, our comfort zones. I thank you, Lord, for releasing a new season upon us. And I thank you, Lord, for every testimony that's going to be coming forth in the coming days. And right now, I come against any doubters, any dream killers, any killjoys or Debbie Downers that may try to come against this new season. And even that spirit of doubt that says, it's not going to happen, or you're not worthy of this. God, I rebuke that. I come against it in the name of Jesus. We trust you, Lord, and we trust your word that you would do just what you said. God, we love you, and we thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed today's episode of Encourage, Inspire, Motivate, make sure you share it with someone you love. Until next time, be blessed.